So this report just came out about Insomniac Games, the people behind Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart might have just misled a lot of people by saying their game was not possible on any other platform than the PS5 because of its SSD technology. Well, but developer came out saying that's just not true. Let's get into this and see if Sony really did lie to gamers. Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by and checking out the video. Remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button. The support is greatly appreciated. And if you want to be notified on future content, make sure to hit that small little bell icon. It helps out the channel a lot. All right, let's get into this because there's a lot to unpack here, especially since most people are all over the place with this new news item, because it does paint a very different picture of a game that people have loved for a pretty long time. Yet it's also a game that people have championed as a true next generation title. That's exactly what Ratchet & Clank is to be honest. It's a fun next generation title that I had a great time playing personally. Yet one of its biggest advertisements and marketing tools that was attached to it was that it was a full on true next generation title that can only be done on the PlayStation 5 because of its SSD power. The assets and the portal rifts being streamed into the game can only be done with that SSD. That's something the developers of the game said themselves. And for a long time, some people have questioned that aspect of the game. Especially since Mike Daly, the game's director, said this could be done on the PS4 when he said this. This claim was later dialed back somewhat after the game launched when game director Mike Daly told Axios, You could make a game like the new Ratchet & Clank on the PS4, but just visually speaking, you would have to dial back a ton in order to get it to run. And as it turns out, some developers around the industry have also looked into the game to see the new technology at hand. Because that's what people who hear about new tech do. They look into it to see if it's something cool or different or something they can implement themselves. And that's exactly what John Burton, the founder of Traveler's Tales, has done. He went into the game and broke it down, which the article mentions right here. Ratchet and Clank's riffs could easily have been done on PS3, claims Traveler Tales founder. John Burton said that Insomniac's claim that only the PS5 could pull it off is misleading. The founder of Traveler's Tales has claimed that the rift effects in Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart don't need the PS5's SSD to work and could easily have been accomplished on hardware from two generations ago. Okay, that's some pretty harsh criticism from a developer that not only understands the tech behind making games, but has a ton of experience in the industry. So not only does he say this could be done on the PS3 console, but it easily could be done. That's pretty hardcore if you ask me. But you know what? I don't want us to assume anything. I want to see a deeper dive into it because I want to know his explanation around this. Not to mention, I want to know what was misleading about Ratchet & Clank. Here's what was said. Burton accuses Ratchet developer Insomniac of being somewhat misleading when it claimed the portal traveling mechanic would not have been possible without the solid state drive of PlayStation 5. The programmer goes on to claim that the way the Rift gameplay was represented before launch was pretty misleading, and that what was shown as the amazing sequences of Ratchet zipping between many other worlds all chained together into awesome action sequences ended up being mostly just cutscenes or very short sections of very limited gameplay. Burton makes it clear that he isn't saying the PS5 is not using the SSD fast loading speeds to do everything properly, but that it's not true to claim these set pieces aren't possible to pull off on older hardware. Okay, so this is something that makes more sense now, because when I played Ratchet & Clank and the riffs were pretty awesome and the set pieces were great, but that's exactly what they were, set pieces. They weren't this big open world set pieces that gave me, as a gamer, a lot of control over them. But there was still parts in the game where I was zipping around and flying around going from world to world. So to me, I never saw anything like that from other generations or games that have come out beforehand. But as for the combat where you're in a room fighting enemies that were there, there was these little rifts that you can instantly jump to. To me, those weren't game changing. They were cool and made the gameplay mechanic awesome, but again, they didn't change the scenery all that much overall, but it was still something I figured took a lot of asset streaming from the SSD to pull off. Burton explains that some of these things are being manipulated in different ways, but are still not SSD heavy. Here's what's said. He claims that the bonus pocket dimension areas are the easiest to pull off because they're small stages with limited scenery in them. Now they could be using all kinds of solid state drive trickery to pull these off, Burton says, but because it's just one rift and it always goes to the same area, this can easily be achieved on older hardware. 
Going into an explanation of asset streaming techniques for those unfamiliar with the process, Burton then points out the pocket dimensions are really graphically basic and in fact just seem to use a lot of the same generic objects like crates that would already be available in generic memory. So it's pretty much a sky dome, a few small platforms, generic objects, and nice lighting so on older hardware it wouldn't take much memory especially as it also uses the generic objects, all of which make it quick to load. To me, this explains why the SSD might not be needed in those small rooms I mentioned earlier. But again, those objects he talks about are destructible and have a lot of cool effects attached to them. So that makes them individual items that are also interactive. That's something he didn't really mention or discuss. But if he did, please let me know down below because I want to know if he did. Yet I won't go into much detail about those small areas because I even thought they were awesome but not something that blew my mind away. They had a lot of action and enemies on screen but it wasn't complete destruction all over the place and I always felt it was just a cool contained experience. As for the big massive set pieces, that's where I believe the SSD was being used. Yet Burton says even those massive set pieces are controlled. Here's what's said. Using an example section where Ratchet is on a speeder bike, goes through a portal, and lands on a grind rail, Burton states that the game is deliberately placing the player into a very small stages and giving them limited control to help manage the data it's streaming in. The important thing to note here is that none of this is optional, it's forced, Burton explains. This is important because it means you can preload the grind rail section while you're playing the speeder section. In fact, Every section of the sequence is both forced and small. You only move across a very small part of the world and have very little ability to even move during this section. This means the game has the whole time you're playing the section to load in this next section. So imagine the game has two memory buffers. The first buffer holds the section you're currently playing in. While you're playing, it can load the next section into the second buffer. To transition between the buffers, you can just have a very simple intermediate void location permanently in memory to hide any swap over glitches that might happen. Okay, so after thinking about this, I do have to admit that this makes a lot more sense. The speeder scenes I played in the game did have a lot of cool experiences attached to them, but they were very limited and guided you to do certain things. But again, some of these things were massive experiences. Not to mention, there were parts of the game where you would hit a rift crystal and transport yourself to a new location and a new world with completely different assets. Yet Burton says you can load those assets and keep them available because it's a forced experience and not something you can explore freely. That makes sense, and this article does paint a different picture on what Sony said. So the question is, did they lie to gamers about this? To me, I don't think they did, because some of those things Burton brings up does make sense from a technical aspect. But in order to maybe do some of these things he mentions, you might have to take the quality of some areas down, or you might have to sacrifice the destruction of those simple objects he mentioned. To me, Burton is looking at this from a very technical point of view, and I understand that. But a lot of the explanations didn't take into effect the complete world changes like I mentioned with that rift crystal. The massive boss fights while zipping by the entire map at a crazy speed. Yet yeah, do I think the small combat section where there was rifts needed the SSD? Probably not. But to me, that wasn't the whole experience. I look at the game as a whole, and from what I saw in some of their set piece experiences, I just didn't think a last gen console could have done it which was echoed by the game director Mike Daly with the quote I brought up at the beginning of the video. So that's what I think. I think in order to get this, you would have to make the game look a little different, bring the assets down and the quality down, which is the imaging and the textures that are loaded into the screen. That's where I think the SSD thing is kind of overblown. I think that this game could be done on a PS4, but again, you would get it at a much lower resolution and not as many things on screen or enemies on screen. That's where those things start coming in and why the PS5 was needed. But we have to admit that this game probably could have been done on the PS4. For the PS3, I don't know, that's a little hardcore. But for the PS4, probably and maybe could have been. But we're happy with Insomniac and what they did. So let me know what you think about this though. Do you think Ratchet and Clank could be done on a PS4 or PS3? Does it even matter that this could be done on older hardware? Did Sony actually lie to gamers? Was this a ploy to have people buy the PS5? Did that ploy even work? Did you buy a PS5 just to play Ratchet and Clank? Go down below and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button to support us out the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zalker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. 
Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zocker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. So, right now, I have a bunch of achievements. I'm at like 3,000 achievement points just this month, just like last month I had 3,000 because I've been playing a lot of games. I beat Sunset Overdrive. I've been playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla a lot. I'm loving that game. I don't care what anybody says. I know some people found it boring and a kind of a little overwhelming because there's so much to do, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm playing it on my PC right now, and then next week I'll be playing it on my Xbox. I love transferring between the two because that's what I do i play on everything i don't really just stick on one console or one piece of device or anything like that i like moving around playing my games and having fun i don't like being boxed in so to speak plus i'm kind of waiting to play something on my ps5 i might try ghost of tsushima or i might try that 60 frames per second for horizon because i haven't played horizon yet and i've been waiting for that boost and now that they put the 60 frames on there i might go check it out and actually play it but let me know what you're playing are you playing something on your ps5 your xbox series x or are you waiting for something to play that's coming out in the next few months let me know down below because that's what we're here for to talk games and that's all for now thanks for watching and until next time remember enjoy your gaming later